All right, folks, this is insane here. I just want to take a scan of all these notes because this is amazing findings, history in the making. Just from today, just scan my notes from this page. Yippee Kaye, and then down on this page. I don't, don't want to get the light back in there. This is amazing findings. Amazing stuff, and the stuff at the bottom is the best part of all. Okay, so, um, whoa, 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 whoa. The coolest one of all that I want to share is this Greek word hypostasis, which the earliest church fathers used to define an individual member of the Trinity. Okay? There are three members of the Godhead, and they use this specific Greek word, which we're going to look at mathematically right now, and we are amazed at how it is perfectly crafted to glorify the number three. So I'm just going to show you straight off my notes. You can find this for yourself on Wikipedia by starting at the Wikipedia article Trinity, the Holy Trinity, and you will come to hypostasis, the Greek term, dig in, and look at the numbers. This is going to shock the world. This is shocking every person that will see this. Here is the Greek word hypostasis. <laughs> look, every single circled set of letters in red divides by three, yielding the numbers 480, okay, followed by 270, 300 at the dead center, then 201 divides by 3, and then 210 on the end divides by 3. And then notice uh, that the 300, there are nine letters perfectly, 3 times 3, the 300 is at dead center all by itself, the T. And then best of all, you can go pairwise from the inside out to make multiples of 3. So start with the 300 at center, take the next two letters moving outward, that's 201, 200 plus 1. Then take this 70 plus this 200, that's 270. Then take this 80 with this 10, that's 90. Then take the first letter, 400, and the last letter, 200, to make 600. And you've got pairwise multiples of 3 moving out from, from the center letter, which equals 300. This is a huge find for theology because this is the official word um, in Greek that the early church fathers used to refer to one of the three members of the Trinity. And by divine words, the very exact perfect letters of that Greek word scream out the number three in perfect symmetry, total balance, unbelievable glory, and perfection. Now, I'm going to get detailed here on the grand total of that number because the law of prime is involved here. The grand total is, as we have written down here, the grand total is... 3 times 487. That is a prime number. Well, lo and behold, which prime is it? It is the 93rd prime, and 93 is king for the number 3 because it's all factor 9, 9 and 3. That glorifies the number 3. And 93 is 3 times 31. And 31 is all factor 3, which boils directly down to 3 by the law of prime. 31 is the 11th prime, 11 is the 5th prime, 5 is the 3rd prime. So that is the glory of the grand total of that word in Greek. As if that wasn't enough the divinely ordained English hypostasis, which we read everywhere all over the internet and Wikipedia, and that, that divine text adds to perfectly 151, which is the 36th prime, which divides by 3. But the Greek is by far the most satisfying. You always go to the depths to get the most juice. Look, that is stunning. Sheer stunning. Every pair of letters makes a multiple of 3, okay? in the three digits, no less, 480, 270, 201, 210, 300. Every single one of those numbers is three digits. It divides by three. That is insane. And then pairwise from the inside out, multiples of three. What does that word mean in Greek? What does that word mean? Well, it was used by the early church to refer to one of the three members of the Trinity, the triune God. They said three hypostases. Three hypostases in one. And then they use this other word, which we're going to talk about right now, in usia, is the transliteration, usia, which we translate in English as being, you know, a, a single, a, a, a being. Um, so three hypostases 
individual um, individual persons. Hypostasis is also translated person. Okay, three persons. Personae, hypostases would be persons. So a single hypostasis is the equivalent of a single person. So we talk about three persons of the Godhead, three hypostases in the Greek of the Godhead. And then one usia, they said, one being, okay? And look at the word usia, it screams out the number three as well in Greek. Here it is right here. I've highlighted one combination you can do to get multiples of three. The whole thing divides by three. 200 plus one in red, and then the three greens uh, knit together to make um, uh, 480. The whole grand total is 681, which divides by three. It is three times 227, which we can look up for the law of prime. Um, but, um, and then you can combine these Greek words if you wanted. Why not? You know, combine usia with hypostasis. Put three hypostasis together with usia. Three persons, one usia, one being, the trinity. Okay, and, um, and then there's other combinations of threes you can get from this. You can put the 200 next door with the 400 to make 600, and then the small values of 70 uh, plus 10 plus 1 to make 81, which is 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. That's beautiful. Um, and so the official, like the early church, came up with the, the official declaration of the Trinity using these very words, and they basically came up with the sentence right here. And I wrote it down. You can find it for yourself in a research of Trinity. Three hypostases in one usia. That was their official way of talking about the Godhead. And judging by the math of these numbers, it was ordained, as all world history is. Three hypostases in one usia. Three of these guys, three of these guys, words that scream out number three, in one usia, three persons, one being. The Trinity. Wow. That is how the, these are the words, the Greek words of the early church. We're going to the deepest roots and we're getting the most satisfaction. And now I have a bunch of other things to share. You know what, I'm going to start from the end and I'm going to go backwards. I'm going to go in reverse chronology order that I was finding gems. Um, the last shall be first, why not? Um, and for the record, I was pulling gems off of my Azus laptop. And yes, Azus divides by three perfectly. In fact, Azus equals 60 equals holy equals pure equals word equals pray equals believe. I was um, at root level harvesting gems from the... Uh, article Holy Trinity, the Trinity, off of Wikipedia, and then digging into um, other offshoot articles from that. So all of these gems can be found by going onto the Wikipedia article Trinity and digging in. Okay. Here's a great gem. Now I'm working from the from the back front, so the chronology is kind of in reverse order. On the three natures is a famous work by an early church theologian. I'm here to present the number is the famous 216, triple eight, tripled, and tripled again. That's the exact value of this text on the three natures. Whew. It's one of the earliest writings about the Trinity um, in church history. Um, Tertullian. Tertullian is my favorite name in Christian theological history because it's so fun to say and because mathematically it's stunning. Furthermore, his full birth name is absolutely screamingly large and screamingly beautiful for the number three. It's all by divine ordinance because this was the man, Tertullian, was the God-ordained man in history to be the first official defender and writer of the Christian Trinity. He was the first, and we always know that the first is most important and critical. Tertullian, his name, is so loaded with threes, it's embarrassing. You can slice it directly. The coolest thing is you can slice it directly in half. Five letters at the beginning make 84. Five letters on the back make 48. And you can get the two 24s out of the back. LL1212 12, 12 plus 24. 1212 12, 24 is 48. 24 plus 24, literally 48. And then you can find all the threes in the front that make 84. It's perfect. Equals 132, which divides by three. His full birth name is this huge number, which is three times three times three times the eighth prime. Triple eight, tripled, and tripled again. 
It's like Quintius Florens Septinius. Oh no, it's, it's like Quintus Septinius Florens Tertullianus. That is divine, and the Anglicanization is divine. Tertullian, we say. Tertullian everywhere. Everyone knows Tertullian. Tertullian. And the reason he is so important is because he is the first one to defend the doctrine of the Trinity in extant written form. I get gems, just simple gems, all through these, these writings and solving these articles. Tertullian had a Christian wife. <laughs> Christian wife adds perfectly to 144, the perfect square of 12. I just, things pop out at me. I, I feel like solving them. I, I solve them for the glory of the Trinity. This is another great gem. Three persons, one substance. That adds perfectly to 300 bang on the nose. You cannot deny the perfection of that total. This is to the glory of the triune God. Three persons, which divides by three, one substance divides by three. What, what are both of the components add to? Um, one substance, uh, 34 plus, let's get into three land, so 39, 42, 57, um, plus uh, 42 is 99, plus 39, 138. So one substance is 138 divided by three, three persons is uh, 162, that's right. Three persons adds to love, love, love. 162. Wow, that's amazing. Wait a second. I've got a, I've got a pair of famous 162. So let's get these on the board. We got all the time in the world, thank God. By the way, as a review from the last gems, three trees. We got this divine gem from the Lord, the three trees, the three crosses at Calvary. Three trees is an obvious gem that adds perfectly to one, two, three. And uh, the number of strokes in this divine set of letters divides by three. You can count it for yourself. The word tree in Hebrew, the three glyph root for tree, divides by three. When you say trees, at seem in Hebrew plural, that is 210 divides by three. Boom. And then you can say the three trees. And what's, what's so special about this is, is we were talking about letters that are, are similar in words. I mean, the word the is so similar to the word three because it contains T, H, and E. And the word tree is so similar to the word three because it contains tree and three. So the obvious conclusion is to put these three words together, the three trees. The three trees. One, two, three. The three trees, which were the most famous silhouette that ever happened against a skyline in world history, with Jesus Christ dying on the central cross, on the central tree for the sins of the world, a man on the left, a man on the right, Three trees, the three trees, divides by three. It's a divine, mathematical, perfect gem linguistically for the glory of the Trinity. Three trees adds to one, two, three perfectly, and grade one children can do the math. Now, I want to clear this off so that we can, as beautiful as it is, it's recorded in world history, okay? It's on video. Now, I want to write a couple things on the board from what we just found. Um... Three persons, three persons, 56 plus 19, 75, uh, plus another 21, 96, plus 18, uh, 114, plus the word son, is um, <clears throat> 162. So watch this. This is huge. This is huge. So three persons, three persons equals love, love, love. Just like the word university equals the same value. 162, which is 354s, which is, of course, the value of love. That's the same value as the word university by divine ordinance. And you can find the three loves in university. And I believe we already did this. You can find the three loves in, in three verses. Now, this is in dead equivalence to the number three. When you write and speak of the number three, when you speak that divine phrase, the number three, you get the exact same total as this. It's the exact same. And you can find the 354s piecewise in both of these divine phrases. So when you say three persons, you are saying love, love, love. When you say the number three, you are saying love, love, love. And you can find 
the 354 is equal to love. In both of those, a simple way to do it is by getting 33s together with a 21. Here I see a 21 and I see a uh, 33. Done. That's one love. Um, here I see a, let's see, um, b -b 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 what do we want to do next? Um, 24. Ah, this one might not be able to do it. You might have to dig around a little bit more. 33, I don't see another 21. Um, 18, 18, a triple of 18s is another way to go. Yeah, I'm not... SC, 24, you could go with 24 plus 30. Let's go, let's go TEE -E to make 30 plus a uh, 24 here. So let's say that's one combo. Then let's go, um, what do we have left? We got these guys left. We got this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy left. Uh, can we get 33 plus 21? Now we've used up our E's. Um, HR, RR. I don't, I don't feel like letting this go, but I'm sure you can find the, the three loves and three persons and the number three. Do that for homework. Um, but okay, back to back to this. So, so three persons, one substance equals three hundred. Perfectly. Genius. Um, oh, okay. Now, this this gets even better. This is a real gem. This is a huge gem from the Greek. The very first person to mention, as written in this article to mention the Greek word Trinity with respect to God, okay? So Theo Tertullian was the guy that really clarified it, hit it out of the park, did, it, did an extent right up on it, but the first person to use the Greek word for Trinity in talking about God was Theophilus. And this is divine because we know that this is the man by divine ordinance that the Gospel of Luke was written to. If you open your Bible to the Gospel of Luke, the very beginning, or pardon me, the, the Gospel of Acts, the book of Acts, which was written by Luke, who wrote the Gospel of Luke. You will see in the beginning verses of Acts that Luke is writing to a man named Theophilus. Well, that is so divine beyond reason, because Theophilus means lover of God, or friend of God. <laughs> wow, I mean, that, that is so delightful. I mean, anyone who reads the Bible is a friend of God. Like, you are drawing near to God. You love God. You want to know more about Him. Theophilus in Greek is so perfect for the number three, it's embarrassing. And here are the numbers, right there before your very eyes. <laughs> Who cares what my nails look like? Look at the truth here, okay? Um, I'll, I'll grab a pen so that it's like when you're so excited, who cares? What, you know. So, the first letter is nine, three times three. The next two letters are five plus 70. That makes 75 divided by three. Then you have a 500 plus a 10, that makes 510 divided by 3. Then you have 30 divided by 3. Then you have the famous OS ending all over the place in Greek, which makes 270 the perfect cube of 3 times 10. That's flawless. Theophilus <laughs> divides by 3 screamingly, step by step. Theophilus, that means lover of God. This name is famous for two reasons. The first one I just mentioned is that he is the ordained recipient of the Gospel of Luke and the Book of Acts, which most scholars agree are the most extensive and scholarly-like in their writing um, by Luke, who was a physician, a doctor, you know, very meticulous, very detailed. The Gospel of Luke is very lengthy. The Book of Acts is very meticulous, very detailed. And both of those, by divine ordinance, were written by Luke to a man named Theophilus, which means lover of God. And we are all lovers of God. It's divine that all of us who read those books to this day would call ourselves Theophilus. We are lovers of God. We are friends of God. Um, and it's, you know, God is just so awesome. It's like, the former account I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began to see and do. That's how Luke begins the Gospel of Acts. Well, he's talking to you. You're a lover of God. You're a friend of God. When you open your Bible and read the book of Acts, you are a friend of God that's receiving this, you know, this story. You're receiving the truth of world history. You're receiving it from God. But with respect to the Trinity, 
What's even more special about this name Theophilus is that he was the first person, the, the, the earliest recorded use of the word Trinity in Greek is attributed to this man, Theophilus. And so look at his name. Just like Tertullian, it screams at the number three. By the way, Augustine, St. Augustine divides by three. He was the follower of Tertullian. Most of Tertullian's earliest works were an influence on St. Augustine, from what I read. And Jerome, who was a contemporary of Augustine, also divides by three. I just see God commemorating these lives in world history. Rather, he foreordained them and has ordained their, their names to this hour to divide by three for his glory. Jerome divides by three. Augustine divides by three. Tertullian divides by three. Saint divides by three. Patrick divides by three. So St. Patrick divides by three. Okay? I believe Valentine also divides by three. Yes. Um, Valentine divides by three. St. Valentine's Day. We, we gloss over these holidays now as if they were some kind of like, you know, pleasure trip for parties and stuff like that. Valentine's Day is named after St. Valentine. St. Patrick's Day, of course, after St. Patrick. Every one of these words that I'm speaking divides by three. St. Valentine divides by three. St. George divides by three. That's like the, the, the flag of England. St. <laughs> George. St. George divides by three. Okay. St. Patrick divides by three. St. Jerome divides by three. St. Augustine divides by three. St. Tertullian divides by three. Um, and <clears throat> so... Yeah, oh, I just want to quickly write Jerome on the board. And why not Augustine as well? And why not... I love getting things on the board because then the writing is officially on the wall. Jerome. This is too good. Two center letters divided by three, and E knit together to make 18, 15 there. Done. What more can you ask for? You literally have teams of 15, 18, 18, and 15. Good night. That's a pair of 33s in total to make 66 and 6 letters for the glory of the Trinity. Jerome. We should have more boys being born that are named Jerome. <laughs> um, and then Augustine. Similar phenomenon. Bookends at least. ST, I'm just going to throw it together. GN, I'm going to throw it together. These letters all divide by 3. Um, I believe Augustine is like 1 away, twice by 3. Okay. But I want to stick with the program. We were talking specifically about the Trinity and Theophilus here. So, back to these Greek letters for Theophilus. Okay? Look at, look at that. TH, 9. Th, 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 th. 3 times 3. And then we got an E here. Okay, that can go with this O. Or it could go with the O on the end. This 500 can go with an O. To make 570 divided by 3. Okay? This, you know, this I could go with the two O's to make 150. This, um, and you could put these guys together to make 705. You can, you can do a lot of interlinking and cross braiding, but uh, I just did the initial, you know, combining of next door neighbors to make beautiful threes everywhere down the pipe. What does the whole thing add to? Theophilus adds to 780, 810. Um, 885. Plus nine, eight hundred and ninety-four, which is um, three times two hundred ninety-eight, and you can go further there. So Theophilus, whose name screams at the number three, starting with nine, three times three. So Theophilus was the first person to use the Greek word for Trinity. Wow, glory to God. Um, Okay, now we're just, I'm just going to keep going into lighter and lighter gems. Um, foreshadow. I love this word. They foreshadowed. I, I love how God has been revealing himself, how he's been revealing more of himself through time. Clearly. <laughs> okay. And uh, the Trinity was earliest, in my, and earliest foreshadowed, in the revelation of Jehovah appearing to Abraham as three persons. That's one of my favorite chapters of the Bible. And I got this word from the Holy Ghost to preach on. That is Genesis chapter 18. And I was led by the Holy Ghost to do the math on chapter 18, including the number of letters and the number of strokes. And here I can show it to you what I wrote down. 
Genesis divides by 3, but chapter 18 divides by 3. Chapter 18 equals 144 perfectly, which is 12 times 12, and that is accomplished in exactly 15 letters, which divides by 3, and 45 strokes, which divides by 3. 42 strokes, which divides by 3. Chapter 18, just so you can understand that God is sovereign, even the chapters and the verse numbers of the Bible are sovereign. Okay? Genesis chapter 18 is a very important chapter because it shows off the Trinity in human flesh way back before the promised Son. And what is so divine is that this Trinity shows up to announce the promised Son to Abraham, who is ultimately the root of the Christ. So this is the most special occasion. How old is Abraham? I encourage you to analyze that chapter of the Bible for the number three. You will find so many threes in that chapter it will blow your mind, down to the detail. Abraham was sitting in a tent. Tent in Hebrew divides by three. You know, knit together Abraham plus Sarah, their names. You know, Abraham's age, of course, was 99, which is king for the number three. You can study the details. What did God say? He, at one point, God says, where is Sarah, your wife? God knew where Sarah was, but he spoke those words for his mathematical glory. You do the math on those three separate words in Hebrew, it screams out the number three. It's like stunning. It's like a triple of 84 times seven. It's like, where is Sarah, thy wife? That's the, the Trinity talking to glorify himself mathematically. And if you study that chapter, chapter 18, Genesis chapter 18, if you dig into that chapter for the number three and squeeze as many threes out of that whole thing, you will be singing your head off. It's a symphony for the Trinity. It's, it's, it's a fabulous symphony. It's, it's basically one of the most famous acts. Who in their right mind ever would have dreamed that three men, the very makers of the universe, would show up in human flesh before their very eyes? If I had a camera, of course, that'd be the first thing I'd want to see. What color were their eyes? What color were their hair? What, what, how did their physiques compare? Was there differences? In their, in their appearance and personality, was there differences in their clothing? I believe there must have been distinct personalities there must have been. Perhaps one was different from the other, were there voices? What did Abraham see and hear? If only we had a video. Um, but uh, what we do have is chapter 18, and you can scream out the number three, that's all God wants us to have, at least most of us. <laughs> Unless he invites us into a deeper, amazing level of revelation, Genesis chapter 18, pure threes, chapter 18, 12 times 12 and 15 letters, Genesis chapter 18. Read that chapter and, and see the Trinity, see the three members of the Godhead visiting Abraham. Um, so, okay, so, um, but this word foreshadow screams out the number three, and just there's all the threes just boom package by package it's pure threes and then foreshadowing adds perfectly to again 144 the famous 144 and i got this gem just from reading the article about the trinity about how god foreshadowed the trinity way back in genesis chapter 18 when when the trinity shows up in three men in in human flesh before abraham to announce the promised son which is the root of the messiah jesus um and uh, so I love that word foreshadow, foreshadowing, foreshadowing. God, God is revealing himself slowly, more and more and more through time over world history. And even in our own personal lives, God will give us raindrops of his leading. He'll often give us words, you know, in increasing frequency that we start to pick up on God's leading for our life. God is a gracious leader. He foreshadows his movement. He foreshadows what he's doing next. And, and uh, all through history, he's been, he was foreshadowing the coming of the Messiah and foreshadowing with all these beautiful metaphors through the Old Testament. And, and then looking back, we get to see everything that God was doing. It's like Jesus said, what I'm doing right now, you don't understand. But later you will understand. That's the story of your life right now. You're, you're stuck in chapter 4, and all you've seen is the first four chapters. God sees all 40 chapters. Okay? He sees the entire story. He has a reason for what he's brought you through and to right now. You need to trust him. So I love this word foreshadow. Foreshadow. Wow, foreshadow. God is foreshadowing things to come. 
That divides by three. It glorifies the Trinity. It's a beautiful word. Um, okay. This phrase also divides by three. One God in three persons. Where is it? Where is it that I wrote down this? Where are we? One God in three persons divides by three. One God in three persons. We know that three persons is... Um, 162. Let's just finish that off. It's 26 plus 34. That's, uh... Oh, sorry. Um, that one does not divide by three. One God does. So it's one God, comma, three persons. So, um, yes, and that adds to 222. So, even when people talk about one God, they're actually confessing the number three. Isn't that beautiful? When people say, one God, well, you actually just confess the Trinity. You actually just confess the number three because you've got three letters in the word one, you've got three letters in the word God. Best of all, each word has one O, which is king for the number three, and then the N is together with the G, the E is together with the D, or you can do the N with the D and the E with the G to make multiple of three. Okay? And, um... In fact, I like that the best because then it gets the most balanced teams and has the most interwovenness. So when you say one God, you're literally confessing the three and one because the teams that you get are O equals 15, O equals 15, ND equals 18, and then EG equals 12. Like, look at how obvious these teams are for the number three, and they're just, they're all close to each other. The average value is 15. Three above, three beneath. One God. One God. In six letters, that adds to 60 perfectly for the glory of the Trinity. So whenever someone talks about one God, say thank you for glorifying all three of them. You believe that there's only one God? Well, when you say one God, you've just confessed that there's three of them by divine ordinance. Three in one. Amazing. 15, 15, and then the average of 15. Three above and three beneath. It's obvious for the number three. And then the number of letters is, of course, six. Always count the number of letters and count the number of strokes. How many strokes do we have here? Eight and one, and then I know God is six, which divides by three. Okay, that's 14, double of seven. Seven serves the deeper glory of three, and or eight. Okay, deeper glory of three, higher glory of eight. So now you say one God, three persons. Because three persons, watch how beautiful this is. Three persons was 162. So when you say one God, one God, Three persons. Well, three persons, look, notice this is six letters. Let's just write three persons up here. One God, three persons. How many letters do we have? This is, this is key. And I wouldn't even be surprised if the number of strokes from the 14 here actually ended up knitting together with the, the number over here to make a multiple of three. One God is written in six letters. Three persons is written in 12 letters. Hello, pure threes, 18 letters in total. Well, one God is 60. Three persons is 162 divided by three. Those are two perfect numbers waiting to get married. One God, three persons, adds perfectly to 222. For the glory of the Trinity. 222. And in Hebrew, the word blessing, barak, equals 222. Blessing. Okay. One God, three persons. How many, now how many strokes do we have? We had the 14 from over here. Um, where we have over here? Six. Uh, 12, 18, uh, 24, 27, 30, 31. 31 is all factor 3 and boils directly down to 3 by the law of prime. Perfect. There you go. One God, three persons. Solved. Um, and then I was getting a few, now we're getting a few more gems here. The plural of person is personae. Look at the beautiful threes. Chain links, bookends. Beautiful. Personae. God is three. Personae. Personae. Um, and then now this is really cool. The word clover, a four-leaf clover, divides by three. Clover contains the word love. And it was a clover. This is divine because um, St. Patrick, the patron saint of St. Patrick, was the famous missionary to Scotland, or to Ireland, pardon me, who is the very symbol of Ireland to this day with the shamrock. 
Now that is a clover. It was a three-leaf clover that he used to tell the people of Ireland about the Trinity. Um, and by divine ordinance, the word clover to this day has the word love sitting right in the center of it. Okay? God has been leading us to find love in all the words of world history. Well, this is a real obvious one. Love is at the dead center of clover, and then you've got a 3C in front and an 18R divides by 3 in the back. So clover screams out love, and traditionally, of course, they are three-leaf clovers. But four-leaf clover divides by three. <laughs> four divides by three, containing our, which is love as well. There's another love. And then leaf is 24, so four-leaf or four-leaf, whatever you say, it divides by three, four leaf clover. And never forget that the red carpet equals one, two, three. When we say roll out the red carpet, the red carpet for ceremonies and kings and queens and dignitaries, the red carpet adds to one, two, three perfectly. To the glory of the Trinity. And red, every word divides by three. And there's three plus three plus six letters. The red carpet. It's obvious who takes the glory for every single red carpet in the history of the universe, the triune God. And then this is very special. The scientific name, genus name, for all the different types of clover in world history is called trifolium. And lo and behold, that adds to 1, 2, 3 perfectly. With only the bookends T and M knitting together to make 33, every other letter in the middle divides by 3 all by itself. <laughs> so, if you dig into, you know, clover and, you know, all the, you know, things, St. Patrick divides by 3 and clover has the word love. It's just so cool the word clover has the word love at the center. And um, then a four-leaf clover. By three. Okay, that was awesome. But this gem, hypostasis, is the best thing ever in Greek. That is a huge find for theology and for the glory of the Trinity. Oh man, equals 33. All right, we're going to keep going. I'm too excited. Too excited about all this. We're going to keep digging into that article on the Trinity and see what else we find. Oh man, equals 33. Glory to God, divides by three. Hallelujah, divides by three.